From Ukraine to Taiwan, democracies are under attack. I speak with National Endowment for Democracy President Damon Wilson about how people can fight back. And we'll tell you how Taiwan and China are a hot topic in the U.S.'s midterm elections. You also get a taste of Halloween and a cool vegan spot in Taiwan. This is Taiwan Insider. Over 300 activists, journalists, lawmakers, and policymakers are here in Taiwan for the Global Assembly of the World Movement for Democracy. And with me is Damon Wilson. He's the chair of the National Endowment for Democracy, which is based in Washington, D.C. They're a group, a nonprofit that funds groups that are working for democracy around the world. Well, Damon, welcome to Taiwan. Thank you so much for our interview. I do want to start off by asking you um, a big question. We here in Taiwan actually feel the threat um, to democracy more than ever before because of China's you know, escalated military activity and the war in Ukraine. So what do you think is the biggest threat to democracy today? Well, first of all, Natalie, let me say it's such a pleasure to be back in Taiwan, especially to be back here, as you said, with 300 activists, those that cherish democracy from around the world, learning Taiwan's story. Um, you ask a really important question. And you said you feel the threat here in Taiwan. Well, that's why we're here, because I firmly believe that the epicenter of the future of freedom is here in Taiwan as well as in Ukraine. It means that I think the greatest threat to democracy is really coming from a revanchist Russia that plays out in an attack on Ukraine today. And what we see with a hardening autocratic dictatorship, kleptocracy in China and, and Beijing, which is coercing trying to threaten Taiwan as well as its own people. It's a consequential moment. We're here in the wake of a party congress, an extraordinary party congress, where Xi Jinping has obliterated the limits on his own power with the yes-men around him. But it also means he's more susceptible to mistakes, to decision-making in a bubble. Just look at Vladimir Putin and mm -hmm. the miscalculation he's made in Ukraine. So it is a dangerous moment because we see a, a, a Beijing, a Chinese Communist Party, that has first acted to control its own people with artificial intelligence, big data to survey, control its own population. We've seen this with the Uyghurs and Xinjiang in East Turkestan uh, in prison camps, concentration camps, destruction of mosques, a genocide underway. And then look how quickly democracy and freedom were rolled back despite assurances in Hong Kong. It was the most rapid rollback of freedom in the world and Beijing got away with it. And look at what Hong Kong today. And we hear what Xi Jinping, what Beijing says about Taiwan, uh, coercion, intimidation, threat of use of military force. We have to take that seriously. And so that's partly why we're here to stand in solidarity with what is one of the most vibrant democracies, not just in Asia, but around the world. And that's just something that's remarkable, what the Taiwanese people have built here. It shows the world what, I mean, can you imagine a mainland, a, a China, that, that we're as successful as Taiwan? Oh, that would be totally amazing. Totally different world. What would you say to the average citizen around the world, um, how we need to strengthen democracy? I mean, what can we do as just an individual? The power and quality of democracy is directly tied to the engagement of a citizenry. The history of the United States has been us holding ourselves and our, our leaders accountable and saying we're unhappy with this or we're pointing out our own flaws. And it's that process of relentless self-improvement that leads to better governance. And that's what you see an absence of in a place like Russia and a place like communist China, that self-correcting mechanism that ultimately, it sounds messy, it sounds like people are arguing, but in doing so, they're making their own societies more effective, more resilient. And that's why ultimately I'm optimistic that democracy's future is bright and authoritarian futures are brittle. Really, but they're, they're so powerful and, and they're very tricky too the way they spread disinformation and the way that they coerce uh, their people or other people. 
you're still optimistic that democracy will, will win over... No doubt there's power behind Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, no doubt. But they use coercion, intimidation, mm -hmm. AI surveillance of their own people, imprisonment. They use power in that way to suppress people's identities. And if you think about the opposite in a democracy, look at Taiwan, look at South Korea, look at Japan. It's unlocking the potential of your people. And when you don't control your people, when you unlock their potential, you see prosperity, you see education, you see self-value. Um, the sense of human dignity that comes from that is so beautiful, it's so powerful, and it actually creates a vibrant, strong society. The whole interview will be up on social media, and do like and subscribe if you like our content. Now, U.S. midterms are coming up, and Taiwan and China are playing a role in congressional campaigns. Let's take a look at this report from our partners at Voice of America. President Xi Jinping did not mention the United States during the Chinese Communist Party's 20th National Congress this week, but his message was clear. Beijing will double down in the face of Western threats, including on Taiwan. We are not committed to abandoning the use of force, and we reserve the option of taking all necessary measures. The CCP Congress cemented a more assertive foreign policy under Xi, who will remain in power for a third term. This sets Beijing on a collision course with the Biden administration, which will be under pressure to be even tougher on China should Republicans win more congressional seats in the November midterm elections and minority leader Kevin McCarthy ends up as Speaker of the House. You know, for 50 years, the Chinese Communist Party has launched an assault on the American way of life on our economy, on our jobs, on our companies, on our culture, on, an, on our institutions, on our very future. The U.S. Congress is considering the Taiwan Policy Act, a bill aimed at boosting military capability of the self-governed island against a potential Chinese invasion. Beijing considers Taiwan a breakaway province. Various Republican lawmakers have also promised a tougher stance on everything from securing supply chains to investigating the origins of the coronavirus to make their point that President Joe Biden is soft on Beijing. But even if Democrats retain their slim majority in Congress, Biden's China policy will likely remain hawkish, keeping in place many policies of his predecessor, President Donald Trump, including steep tariffs on Chinese goods and containing Beijing's influence in the Indo-Pacific. Under the Trump administration, the Chinese genuinely hoped that the, the Democrats would win. But after uh, almost two years of the Biden administration, I think the Chinese have come to the realization that both are not going to change the consensus on China. And some in China would even argue that Biden's policy is even more difficult for China because how Biden uh, aligns its position and mobilizes allies and partners to jointly counter China's growing influence. Should Republicans retake Congress, observers say there will be more skepticism toward Biden's approach of competing strategically with China while cooperating on transnational challenges such as climate change. Pat Suida Kuswara, Viewing News, Washington. Next up, Itamar Waxman brings you the latest news from Taiwan. Halloween is becoming more and more popular in Taiwan. Here's a look at some of this year's most creative costumes. The end of October marks the beginning of spooky season in Taiwan. A young girl shows off her Halloween costume, complete with skeleton makeup and a blood-stained dress. This is the work of a professional makeup artist, but some parents have decided to get creative with costume ideas as well. One popular picture shows children dressing up as positive COVID-19 rapid tests. The mother who made the costumes explains that she used poster boards, paper plates, curtain rods, and more to create the look. But people aren't just dressing up their children. One resident in Tainan Xinying District has decorated the outside of their house with bloody handprints and ghosts floating around the balcony. The main attraction is on top of the house, which has a blow-up giant from the Japanese animated series Attack on Titan. Many people have come to visit the house just to take a picture of the massive monster. Some visitors say they really like the decorations, especially when the giant moves around in the winds. 
With Halloween just days away, there may be more spooky surprises on the way. And here's a look at some of the other stories on our radar. Doctors in Taiwan are seeing an uptick in cases of respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, in children. They say the virus may present flu-like symptoms, but some also report rashes and vomiting. Around 80% of patients develop breathing difficulties. In some cases, RSV can be life-threatening. Children under 2 years old are particularly at risk. A coral reef near Taiwan's famous Kending National Park has been damaged by concrete blocks used for holding down buoys. Park authorities say that recent strong winds have blown them into the reef. Divers have been dispatched to move the concrete blocks away and prevent them from causing further damage. Taiwan's Golden Bell Television Awards ceremony was held on Saturday. Taiwanese opera actress Chen Yalan became the first woman to win the Best Leading Actor Award for her male role as the Qing Dynasty Emperor Jia Qing in The Lord Jia Qing and the Journey to Taiwan. Other notable winners included the historical drama series Sakalu for Mosa 1867, the drama Twisted Strings, and the 13-year-old Byronin, honored as Best Supporting Actor in a Miniseries for his role in More Than Blue, the series. And we have a final question. Yes, so I want to ask you a question because Halloween is around the corner. So what is the best Halloween costume you have seen in Taiwan? In uh, Taiwan. In Taiwan. So I've seen a lot of great costumes. This is a very Taiwan costume and was popular last year. It's very cute. It was a, big, a little girl dressing up as Taiwan. Oh, that's one. a classic, yeah. Yeah, that was so cute. That is a so, classic, yeah. yeah. Can't forget that one. Yes, so mine was... Uh, Chinese oh. vampire slash zombie, right? Oh, I think I remember that. Yes. A little, a little I kid? I believe, no, it was actually an adult at a Halloween party that I went to, him and his wife, right? And uh, it was very cool actually because like the costume, it included not just them kind of looking like zombies, but also they had a lot of like yellow paper amulets, which you can buy at like uh, temples here in Taiwan, which are super traditional. And he had them from the temple that his dad actually runs. So it was like a super authentic Taiwanese uh, costume. So how is a Chinese vampire different than a Western vampire? Uh, they're just like the backstory. They call it a vampire, but it's like people also call it a zombie. It's just ah. more of a person or a, a being that is, I guess, like in between our realm and the realm of the dead or right. something like that. I don't think they're really they vampires. They look different, right? And yeah. they don't necessarily wear a cape, right? Do they? No, not at all. So they're not like Dracula. Dressed, yeah, they're just, they look actually more scary, I think. I think they look very, he looked very they scary. They look very scary. He looked very scary. It was a great costume. Yeah, so you gotta check out all the kids' costumes this year. But um, thank you for tuning in to Taiwan Insider. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Itamar Waxman. And uh, do follow us on social media. Follow us, like us, and leave a comment below. Yeah, you could also follow us on YouTube. We're on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.